to another episode of Outcasts to Icons. Now, of course, before we get into today's episode, as always, if you are enjoying the series, please do leave a like on the video. Now, uh, I've actually got quite a few things to discuss before we get into actual games and stuff in this episode. Basically, um, I've had a chance, like, it's, it's been difficult lately because of the way I've been recording to actually sort of, I obviously always reply to comments if I can do, but sometimes getting that stuff into episodes and stuff is, it takes time. Uh, basically, it's just one of those things, it, it takes time because uh, I have to record ahead of time, otherwise this stuff would never get put out. I have to record when I can in massive clumps now. Um, so that's what I'm doing, basically. So, um, basically, you know, we have had some poor times with this uh, save so far in terms of the results. But the fact is, like, if you're the type of person that just wants to see me win every single game, and then this is probably not for you, just because that's not how this is going to be going, is it? I mean, the whole fun of Football Manager for me isn't winning every single game. It's making something work, and then it feels amazing when you do. Because, you know, um, some of the achievements we've had so far with Aheronis, and I found out that that is how it's pronounced, um, I'll are, you know, they feel a lot better because of the sort of turmoil that we've been through in order to get these results. And I don't know about you guys, but I find that the most satisfying thing when you do a save, when everything's going to shit, and then you do something, few things change, and all of a sudden things start going well for you, and then suddenly you start to feel a lot better, and you think, yes, we did that, or I did that, or whatever, and it's just a, it's a good feeling. But also, guys, like, um, just bear in mind, you know, this isn't going to be one of these saves that I'm going to be fickle with. I, I'm, as you know by now, I follow through on these things. If I start a save, I finish it. Like, or, or if I get sacked, of course. But that doesn't happen in this save, because obviously getting sacked is not the end of the world. Um, so, you know, if we do get the sack, don't worry. You know, we've already had it once. We've found ourselves a new club. I think we've landed on our feet. And if anything, I've found ourselves in a better situation. So, again, you know, don't worry about it. Um, next thing is, I have coaching badges. I would be doing a dance right now, and I almost said that in some kind of melody. But yeah, Norm has got his uh, National Sea License coaching badge, which is going to be crucial for us if we do at some point have to leave um, Aheronis. So that is just... Well, obviously, we will have to at some point. My point is that is huge. Now, I have tried to get the next one, but unfortunately, the club can't afford to pay for me to do my National B license. And this is something else I wanted to talk to you about, basically. We have some issues with the finances, basically. Now... When I joined the club, we had an, an excess, sort of like a wage surplus of like £4,000 a week. So basically, I went out and I got, you know, a couple of those players like Calavas and Cara and um, a couple of those other players, like Legero, who are all on sort of between four and 600 a week. But there's about four of them. So it used up, a, actually, no, it was a bit more than that. Basically, I made sure that we had about £1,000 a week left over as a buffer. And I always tend to do that just in case, because you know how it can suddenly switch. Well, it switched, but to the ridiculous levels. And I don't even know what's happened here. And I think this might be because this is an extended database, because I know that this is is not exactly how the league works in Cyprus anyway. Uh, from what I remember, there's actually two divisions at the same level in, in the second tier now. Um, but something doesn't feel quite right because basically, you know, I had all those greyed out youth players in under 21s. Well, all of a sudden they weren't greyed out anymore. And I don't know what happened because I started clicking on them and it turned out all of them are now on £230 a week. And as a result of that, we're now in a weekly wage deficit of £4,000, which means the club is in £200,000 worth of debt already, and we're only in December. It's worrying, because this could be serious problems for us. And the worst thing is, the board are blaming me for it. I didn't sign the youth players up like that. It just They just appeared with contracts all of a sudden. It wasn't a youth intake either, because we've not had one yet. So I don't know what's going on with that. Have anyone else experienced something like that before, where the youth players just suddenly have contracts? But they weren't like £50 a week contracts. They're all on £230 a week. It's really strange um so that's a little bit shit and i'm hoping that that doesn't end up jeopardizing us because i think we're doing quite well really i mean results lately have been a little bit annoying but i'll show you why in a sec um so we've got coaching badges we've got um the finance issues now you might notice that the thumbnail has obviously changed over the last couple of episodes and you might be wondering why is there nothing to do with football in it well i'll tell you why uh because seriously this club is almost in it's so difficult to find anything uh for this team you might notice that's why their logo isn't in the thumbnail because frankly there is only two images of their logo on the entire internet and both of them are about 200 pixels across so in order to put it in my thumbnail i would have to blow it up like mad and it would look shite i, I tried to and it just looked terrible um the only other pictures I could find of them were team photos from two years ago and um, some long range shots on us in like square images that weren't big enough to actually fit on the screen. Um, they wouldn't cover it. So, and I didn't want to use a team photo of them because I felt that that would be a little bit disrespectful But because, you know, people see that and say that you're calling them outcast. I'm not, it's just that's the name of the series. So I wouldn't want to use a team photo like that. Um, so that's why we've got these lovely shots of Cyprus um, in the thumbnails to the videos too. I might start rotating them um, so you get different bits of scenery while we're here. Um, I was unable to find any information about Aheronis at all, literally nothing, other than how to pronounce it. And the only reason I found that out is because I looked on Sockaway um, into the sort of databases they were 
looking just looking through their soccer databases basically and i noticed that it was spelled um Ahironis with an h in english and obviously there's the cypriot spelling or in, with the greek letters and that um which is obviously very different and that's how i actually ended up finding some of these images was by searching using the um the, the local spelling uh so yeah it's, it's been a tough one they are a very and i don't think they're a professional club in real life i think that's just something to do with the database again um so there we go point is though we've been doing okay with them and also i figured out what was wrong with um that caused those weird crashes so you know two episodes ago i had that weird thing where it cut off as we were about to score and then i had to splice it back together because with uh, bandicam it when you, when fm's up it records it and if you minimize fm it stops recording and but then the moment you re maximize fm it starts the recording again um, but it starts a separate one basically that's why it was it's quite a useful feature actually in case that sort of stuff does happen it means you don't lose any of the well you lose a little bit like a couple of seconds tops so there was that but basically what that was was my graphics driver um it was a pop-up that didn't actually display if that makes sense like it was the idea of a pop-up in the bottom corner telling me to update my graphics drivers but because i didn't see the pop-up because fm was loaded i didn't know that i had to do that and as a result then when we went into the next match because um bandicam doesn't capture the screen it captures the actual um direct x 9 uh, overlay so to speak um, rather than just capturing what you can see um, using like just a rectangular capture uh, I use the DX9 capture because I just find it gets a better result and it allows you to do that minimized thing um, when I hit stop FM had sort of locked itself on so it, you couldn't minimize it and that's happened to me before, a few times with recording but the problem with that was it then crashed FM and I managed to shut down Bandicam but then obviously I couldn't save so that was what was causing it um I'm trying to avoid I'm trying to think if there's any ways to avoid it. I've updated my graphics drivers so hopefully things should be good from now on but um fingers crossed I might start saving while I've still got the recording on just for a little bit um and then just cut it off at the end of the episode so you don't so you guys don't have to see it just so I can avoid that kind of situation again because that was fucking irritating anyway that's enough jibber jabber for the start of this episode i've been going on for like seven minutes now um, but i just wanted to get some of that stuff off because obviously you know i don't always get the chance to uh talk to you guys about what you guys have been saying in the comments um in the episodes uh, sorry yeah because you know for the way i have to record so in our last live con we beat pathos by three goals to one and we were fantastic and it enabled us to continue our run of five games in the league with all wins now in our next match we were away at um Omo uh, ammonia or ammonia um, I can't remember exactly the name of the club. I don't know if that AR is actually going to... No. <laughs> um, but, again, a really, really sorry, solid performance. Mario Sotiriu, who's doing really well for us. He's getting quite a few goals on the board. I've got to be saying that. Yeah. And Christopher Cipriano, who'd come off the bench uh, across from uh, Giorgio Cipriano, met it at the back post, and it was 2-0. And it just... I mean, that pushed us up into second place and gave us a really good chance of, of you know, getting somewhere in this league. Then, unfortunately, we got a disappointing result against Apep at home. Um, Pantelis Tavru put us in front, but Demetrius Cipriano gave them an equaliser. I don't think this was a really fair one at all. Uh, we were actually... This is probably one of our best performances. <laughs> it sucks. This is probably one of our better ones, I have to say. We managed 21 shots in this one, eight of which were on target. It's probably one of our best and dominating in the possession. And we just played really well. And it was just a kick in the teeth type of performance. Um, they got one of those ricochet ones where um, your defender tries to clear it and it bounces in off of their player. It, oh, disappointing. Um, because we definitely dominated this match. Um, you can tell, this is the, the key is stat here is action zones you know 33 percent 33 31 percent fine but look at that 24 percent of the play was in their final third that is how dominant we can be when we slow that pace down um at home and away i mean we can do it at both but that's that's the key for me is keeping the ball high up the pitch in their final third can be absolutely devastating when it works um now in our next match again we've had a little bit of bad luck now unfortunately you know we had our times with the good luck you know against Dernier, when we score with every single shot on target, we've had our bad luck, uh, had our good luck. And against Asil uh, away, the, the good luck was nowhere to be seen. Like, as you can see, we were definitely not deserved of anything from this game. Like, we were 5-0 down. Um, but I do not think it was a 5-1 match. And if you look at the stats, they'll sort of play that out. Like... <sighs> We had three clear cut chances to five, you know. It wasn't like it was the dominant. Like we actually went 3 0 up in clear cuts in this game before they even had a shot. And we needed to take our chances, basically. If we do that and everything, it's a different game. But unfortunately, we just couldn't do it. And it was a massive shame, really. But, you know, they look like a really solid side. And I was thinking to myself, well, maybe that is the case. But the fact is, they're newly promoted as well amazingly um so i guess that just shows you the sort of strengths and weaknesses in this uh, area but look at this our pass completion in attack is superb 88 percent pass completion for the attacking players is it, very impressive actually uh, but we do have the ball a lot up there so again a poor performance but you know i wasn't too fussed by it the next game we were 
just awful. I mean, unfortunately, two more injuries. Moraes and Lugero got injured in this one, and we were not very good. Now, the difference with this is... Um, Aggie and Napa, who firstly are a relegated top flight team, but more importantly, they played a system that we just had no answer to. As you can see here, like uh, only 14% possession uh, in that sort of area. They really did. Yeah, the system just didn't work for him in that game. We need to maybe come up with some alternatives. But the point is, we've got a system that works sometimes now, and that is at least better than nothing, I have to say. So all of that, basically. And now it says we're sixth, but look how tight this is. We're sixth place, but we're only a point off of second. Um, and still, amazingly, only six points off the relegation zone. The teams in the bottom, three, uh, bottom four at the moment are actually having a good enough season. But I still feel that uh, with sort of... I want to aim for 30 points. I feel like nine points from our last 13 matches should be enough to keep us up. That's three wins. Um, of course, you know, as much as I would love to see us do something and go up, the main problem is going to be, um, firstly, funds. But secondly, you know, we are one of the poorest. You know, 5,000 to one we were to win this division. And look what we're doing. You know, we're already exceeding all expectations just by what we're doing currently. So... I can only assume that perhaps the reason that there's no other goalkeepers on the clean sheets thing is because all their goalkeepers are, like, on non-contracts or something. I, I don't know why that... And maybe that's the only reason I can think of. Um, so there we go. Now, as to how I'm going to deal with the financial issues that we've got, well, my plan is basically, because all the players are on, like, one-year contracts, I might have to just let so many of them expire to get the finances sorted in the summer and then just rebuild the squad entirely. But in so doing... Um, I will be able to then bring in players exactly where I want for the positions I want at the club. And I think that might be quite beneficial to us as well. That's the only thing I can think of. Literally everyone at this club, at contract expires at the end of the year. And I might actually have to let that happen and maybe just save a couple of the ones um, that I want to keep for sure who've been performing well and then just get rid of the rest and try and rebuild for next season and maybe a promotion push. That's if we don't get ourselves in a promotion push this year. I just think that if we did it this year, it would be purely based on how well the tactic's working rather than the players we've got. Um, but that just shows you how fine the margins are in this league. If you get a good tactic... Uh, even an average team or a poor one can be pretty decent. Uh, so Tavru is the top scorer. Uh, top assistant is Calivas. Most part of the matches is Castanas. Still, he's having a good season. Yellow cards, four for Lugera and Sotiriu. Red cards, none yet. An average rating, of course, Castanas, Constanti, Cipriano and uh, Lugera. All above seven. So let's see. Hopefully they're playing a 4-4-2. Ooh, they're playing a... Hmm. See, this could be interesting. I don't know how well we're going to fare against this lineup, but they are still playing two up top. And I just wonder... Have we got... Look, yeah, we do. I actually think that this might be a... I don't think... We, I think the system could work against that too. Um, I'm hoping, basically. You know, even if we have a little bad run, which we've been on right now, it'd be good to get a win over Adonis right now. But, you know, as they are one of our main rivals for those roles. But bear in mind, we were able to win away at Kami Otissa. And um, I love at Kami Otissa. It sounds like Kami Otits. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, we won away at Kami Otissa and Omonia. So we've got what it takes, I feel, you know, to win against some of these teams. Um, you know, we've beaten some of our main rivals away from home. I, I'm pretty confident. If we can beat Adonis at home, we are the favourites now, but that just sort of, I think that sort of thing's still a little bit broken, that dynamic. Then, I don't know, you just never know what can happen. We'll have to see. You know, they've got a lot of men in midfield, and I guess that could be a problem. But the fact that they're all concentrated in one area means that we might find ourselves a lot of space um, in front of their midfield and just in behind it. So what like that? Tavru straight into the space in behind their fullbacks. Uh, in behind their, you know, they've got no fullbacks, which means that we should be able to get a lot of crosses in. That's the plan anyway. But we may have to adjust the system as and when um, to try and accommodate such a system. Uh, Marais, Pavlu. So they've got lots of space. You know, they've got us covered in the centre of the park. But the moment we get that ball in behind their five-man midfield um, with the overlaps that we can do then they've got problems, basically, because we've got that sort of attacking midfielder that's sitting there, and he's just going to be occupying that space that means that they're going to have to drop one of their midfielders back to cover him. Christo Dulu, ah, that's poor. Uh, Christo, just make sure you don't let him just get that ball into the channel. Marku. So we've got that defensive midfielder as well, just to try and cover, but I don't know if this is going to work so well. Christo, that's a, oh, I was going to say that's a great tackle. Christo is through here, and it's a good attempt, but he's missed the target, and that's fine by me. Are we on a extended or key? Right, no, we're on key highlights, good. Um, they've started okay. We've started okay. It's a bit 50-50 at the moment. Calivas, that's poor again. Um, but hopefully the long ball, oh, damn it. They're actually letting them get those balls clear, and I'm not a fan of that play. Oh, Lugero, damn it. We're getting the tackles in, but unfortunately the second balls are all falling to them at the moment, and that's a little bit of a worry for us. There we go, Lugero. Ball through to nobody, really. Um, we've not hit the target yet with any shots, but we've not had any long shots. We're getting a lot of possession. Calivas, Chris Ladulu, go on, get that ball through. Oh, poor. Please don't shoot. Oh, damn it. Um, that was a bit poor from him, actually. He could have maybe held that bit up, held that up a little bit. Um, I'm worrying... Wow, bugger. Um, it seems to be that a lot of the 
chances in this game are coming from turnovers of possession. Um, so we do need to watch out for some of these runs. Go on, get out to him, get out to him, make the tackle, make the tackle. No! God damn it. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, no, no worries. It's only one goal. The problem is that's the system, I think. You know, that four, that thing, this system works brilliantly against 4-4-2, but we need to try and come up with some slight alternatives to it uh, that can work against other systems. But it, it's all the work in progress, people. You know, we've gained way more points than we had any right to at this stage so far, and I feel that, that you know, this game is not done yet by any stretch of the imagination. We're still playing relatively well. Lugero, it's quite even in that sense. Pavlu cleared away. Oh, come on, guys. They're first to every ball, and that is an issue. Um, and I'm not entirely sure how we can fix that. Are we already on closed down what we are? Uh, maybe get stuck in? I know that's mainly to do with the tackling, but it might just get us a little bit more pressing. Uh, they're actually playing quite well. In fact, they are playing They're playing well, but without much of the ball. Um, but they're making them, trying to make the most of it when they do get it. I'm just wondering if we slow the tempo down a little bit. They've scored another goal, haven't they? Fuck me. Right, okay. Um... I didn't actually see that one. That's that's disappointing. Um, we I don't know. We've kind of gone from a spell where we were doing this to teams to now a big spell where it's happening to us. And I guess that might just be the ebbs and flows of this kind of league. Um, that's a good header. Uh, poor goalkeeping, I guess. But it's a good header, mainly. Uh, I'll don't concede another one. That would be stupid. All right, better. Chris Dulu. Get one back before half time. Let's get this Go in at 2-1 and try to regroup for the second. That's so poor. I don't know why they're playing long balls either. We've... Literally got it set... Well, we don't have it set to not do that, but we don't... We don't exactly have more direct passing on... Oh, that's a good stuff. Right, win that... Win the ball. The the second of every ball. ball oh, what on earth? They're, okay, so I don't really know what to do because they're just not playing very well. I suppose some days you can just have off days, but it can't all be down to that. There's obviously tactical reasons too. Um, like, they just don't seem to be trying very hard, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like, every time there's a 50-50, they're losing it. And I'm not entirely sure what to do apart from put clothes down more on. Um, or maybe close down less. I don't know. Maybe turn push higher up off. Because they do seem to be getting little bits in behind. Maybe try and... Mm. We've got to look for the overlap already on because it's to try and push back their uh, their wingers to stop them from getting into dangerous areas if we can try and push our fullbacks further forward. Uh, that's why it's useful having wingbacks. But... And again, what is that? Like, that isn't a tactical thing. That's just an idiot player. There isn't a tactic that says, let the ball roll through your legs. Um, hmm. The struggling today is a sort of struggle we've had a few times now, which is struggling to get shots on target. Right, Lugero, that's better. Picking it up in the midfield. This is where we need to be picking the ball up more. Calivas, Lugero, right? I think they've changed their tactic. Someone said, actually, I'll change it in a minute. If you switch this to their formation instead of uh, the other thing, it'll give you more of an idea. And I guess I should really try that. I have tried it before. I just didn't feel comfortable with it, unfortunately. Tavru. Ugh. Oh. God damn it. So why can't we do that? They've got a back three. Come on, guys. There's more of you. You're basically three on three with them most of the time. Oh, what? Let me guess. Just plays it straight through my entire defense. Stick a leg out at all. Zucalidis. Somebody put a header in. Oh, my God. Uh, we've not been good enough today. That That is an absolute dead sir. But Jesus, I don't think we've been... Well, no, we have. They've just been bad as well. Like, as much as it is obviously tactically, there's just sometimes you just don't play very well and stupid things happen. Like, what is the goalkeeper? Did he just ghost through the goalkeeper there? It looked like he did. Um, right. We're going to have to change this. We're going to have to try and push up and do something because it ain't working at the moment. Um, right. We're really lacking centre-backs as well, which is another issue we've got. Um, I'm going to bring on Apostolo in that area because we've just got nothing going on at the moment. Um, I don't know. We've not played well today. That is a de that is for definite, but this is my problem. We've suddenly just gone from winning games to just losing games very, very quickly. And I know that the confidence is very, very fragile at this level as we've... Oh, come on. The fact that we're getting injuries in every game doesn't help, but what can we do about it? You know, um, there's literally nothing we could do. The game's come thick and fast. We don't have good facilities. Uh, we can't hire fitness coaches. We basically just have to do what we can. Really? Direct approach? All right, then. Jesus Christ. How many... Bloody hell. <laughs> Calm down. Right. Let's try that, then. It, it just wasn't to be today. Uh, we weren't good enough. Oh, come on. Not another one. That's unfair. Like, if you actually look, I mean, they've had a couple more shots on target and obviously they've created some good chances and that is obviously the king in these sort of situations is, is you know, the chances you create. Calivas, right, 
Papetru. Get that ball across, he's just going to lose it immediately, isn't he? Yep. So why can't we do that? I suppose this is one of those areas where it does matter that your players are worse, basically. In the, you know, As much as you can play as a cohesive team unit sometimes, you are going to get games where they're just... Be Okay, I don't like this shit, though. We're conceding a lot of goals from set pieces, and I don't know why, because it's the same... I'm using the same corner tactic that I use in my other saves and that, to prevent that, and yet they're just not doing it. Um, look at this! Like, what is that? That's shocking. Oh, dear. Oh, well. Um, that's a terrible performance, and we can't deny that. But, again, remember, 5,000 to 1 to win the league. Massive favourites for relegation. So, to even have where we were was a massive shock. Hopefully we can get some of it back, though. Uh, there we go. So Tiriu does well. Just get... Again, poor, right? That's better. Win the ball in these areas. We haven't done enough of that today, winning the ball in that midfield area. I suppose having five in midfield. Ball across, cleared away. Penalty. Okay, so we're going to get a goal back, hopefully. Well, I mean, if we don't, I'll be annoyed because, you know, penalties don't get missed on this game, do they? Uh, the only time... I, the last two penalties I've seen missed were the second penalties in the game. Is Tavlu taking it as well? Not Tavlu. Uh, Tavru. Oh, it's Marais. Of course, he's our penalty taker, isn't he? And it's 4-1. I mean, it's a little bit better for the goal difference, I guess. But we've really, you know, our goal difference was up, up to like plus nine. And now it's sort of slumping back away. But again, we want three wins from our last half of the season. That's what we're really looking for. And we've got some weaker teams to play against. Adonis, as you know, are a solid team. But I think perhaps we need a different tactic for when they pl put five in midfield. Um, perhaps we should try and match them. And it was disappointing. Definitely. They didn't play well, but it obviously isn't all their fault, is it? Come on now. Um, but again, you know, I still feel we're doing okay. Um, but somehow, I mean, look at the relegation zone. It is <laughs> sod's law. That you need like 35 points to stay up or something stupid this year. Uh, and we'll end up getting relegated with like a record points tally. But hey, I, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think that we will be able to stay up. So with us still in the battle here, let's see who we've got um, next. We've got Otelos... Olympiacos at home. A couple of the poorer sides. I'll tell you what we want. We want Carmi Otissa, uh, number two in the league. We'll have them at home in our next episode, I think, guys. So, if you guys have liked what you've seen, please do drop a like on the video. And if you'd like to even more than that, please subscribe to my channel for more Red Star and Outcaster icons in your inbox every single day at 5.30 and 8 o'clock. Hopefully, we can turn this one around. But again, you know, no pressure on us, really. We're still performing well above expectations. And hopefully, if we can work on a second tactic that will play well against the teams that don't play 4-4-2, then, hey, I think if we sort that out, we could be absolutely laughing all the way to the bank next season. So, guys, I will see you guys in the next episode for the game against Kami Otissa. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.